Welcome to Lorehammer, Episode 6, Humanity, the Great Crusade. Welcome back to Lorehammer. This is going to be our fifth episode. Nope, all six. 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 Holy six. smokes. <laughs> Time <laughs> flies, <laughs> eh? When you're, uh, <laughs> when you're so loopy like me. Uh, so I guess sixth episode. Wait, I want to introduce myself. No, I, we're, I, I actually right. made that mistake earlier today. I was like, Mark, we're, we're doing our fifth episode, right? <laughs> what was the fifth episode? Pre-Imperium yeah, humanity. Pre-imperium. Oh yeah, that you were a, there for that, I believe. Even I, I, <laughs> was I? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I, like I might have been physically here. Uh, <laughs> Definitely wasn't emotionally. Oh, here. it's it's the episode that I tried to lead. So that's, <laughs> that's why I have no. That's why you don't remember it. No, I actually. Uh, and just, I just remember the horrors. I of blocked it. it from my memory. Yeah, yeah. Like when like super psychological trauma happens. That's what that episode was to me. Uh, okay, well, welcome to our sixth episode. Uh, this one is going to be Humanity, the Great Crusade. My name is Eric. Yay, I'm Mark. And I am Jordan. And I guess thanks for um, showing up and supporting us. Yeah, so we've actually got quite a few downloads, surprisingly. Not a bunch, but more than I thought we would have in, like, the time that we've had it up. <laughs> uh, as of this point, when we're recording. Yeah. Yeah. But, it's, yeah, so thanks for downloading. Know, for four, four days or something. Yeah. 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 Sweet. Yeah. Really, I just thought it was going to be, like, one or two people. And then it was just going to be, like, those guys. And yeah. every episode would be like, hey, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, personally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, Mark actually wanted to just do a shout-out to one of his fans. Go no, no, it. it was not a shout-out. It was more shouting at. Okay. Mark. Stop listening, mother. <laughs> uh, apparently, she listened to it and she sent us an email. Eric so nicely responded to the email. Well, as I do to all our fans. Yeah. Come on. Well, yeah, because you're our, such a nice guy on our social <laughs> Mom, media. Mom is number one fan, right? Yes, Mom is number yeah. one fan, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Number one, as in the only one. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, no, no, we have my brother listening, too. Oh, yes. We'll give a shout-out to him. Uh, Thank you, friend. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, today, um, we don't have any amendments, I, I think. Uh, when I was listening to the other one, there's nothing really to change. I think we did a pretty good job. Yeah, there's not a whole bunch. Go team! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a whole bunch of details to mess up. It's no. kind of, you know... It's pretty strict and straightforward. Yeah. Uh, something... Uh, we mentioned in a previous podcast that we never actually we said we'd touch on and we never did was servitors yeah so we were talking about um the men how of iron. the men of iron were created and they were like ai and they tried to conquer the galaxy and then after like the galaxy defeated the men of iron they put a bunch of rules on technology like you can't create ai anymore and they put a bunch of other rules down too to keep this from happening again yeah so one of the things that uh they kind of did to avoid this rule was they created servitors which are basically humans with mechanical enhance enhancements to fulfill menial roles yeah. but it's like enhancements to the point of where you're not really human anymore. yeah like they don't have any more like will. uh will yeah and uh they're just they're, like a servitor is a good name because they're pretty much just servants yeah exactly because they still had like line mach or like factory lines that they need to keep going or whatever mm -hmm. so they still need stuff so that's kind of how they overcame uh, and these it. guys look messed up too yeah like, and like a like servitor they can rip, be they just rip body parts off and put <laughs> machines on yeah and a servitor can be anywhere from yeah like a guy who's missing an arm and has like a forklift arm yeah to a floating servo skull where it's just like a skull with like a uh, anti-gravity unit in it yeah. and a video camera just floats around and records stuff which is so cool because i love seeing and they just have the tentacles <laughs> <laughs> yeah i like those i would have a pet i'd name it steve steve the servo skull yeah even though like it would have been taken from like uh artonius or something and like <laughs> that was like the original human I would steve just go, tonius shut up steve <laughs> i would just want to yell at my skull all the time <laughs> The, the other thing that they did, too, was uh, to kind of get around this AI thing is they have what's called machine spirits, which, 
Which is that, it? That can I roll? Like a can I roll my eyes? Eye. Yeah, can yeah. I roll my eyes any harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which like literally like it's pretty much an AI. Like there's stories of like the machine spirit in a Land Raider where all the crew is killed, but the machine spirit would still drive the vehicle around and like take out, yeah. shoot, and take out orcs and whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, but but to no, them, no, it's okay because it's the spirit of the machine. Exactly. So it's kind of like. Once they got into like more of that religious side of things, That's where like after they the revere, gone. no, no, like because the me- the Mechanicum always worshipped machines, even before the Emperor came. Yeah, but I thought the machine spirit wasn't as accepted by like the Im- no, no, the it, Imperium. No, it always is. Oh, yeah, because okay. it's not AI, right? Of course, so it's fine, right? Of course. <laughs> Yeah, so that's kind of the only thing we we said we were going to talk about, it and then we didn't, but now we did. So yeah, so screw you guys, no whoa, hating whoa. on us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so just got I was a just a yeah. little repressed rage <laughs> inside. Oh boy. <clears throat> I think that takes us to like what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, the Great Crusade, the greatest of the Crusades. Mm. Some would say like the the brightest moment in humanity's history. Yeah. Well, all Crusades are bright. <laughs> Absolutely. So and fun. Yeah. I have yet to hear of any crusade in humanity's history where, like, I I don't agree with what happened. So I just like, like, anytime there's a crusade, I'm like, let's go for it. Let's just let's jump just, on it. Yeah, let's give it 110 percent. Burn everyone we need to, and then we'll just and create look. soap, right? Create and then say soap. and that, arithmetic. Yeah, exactly, and say that it was a good thing. It was a good thing. So <laughs> sweet. A uh, little tidbit. So yes. The Europeans got soap, yeah, but they also learned how to temper their swords during the Great Crusade. Oh, because not, <laughs> not the Great Crusade. No, sorry, the Good Crusade. <laughs> no, the, the the Holy Land Crusade. Yeah, yeah. Way back, like Richard the Lionheart. Yeah, right? yeah. So the Saracens, they um, they would quench their blades after they would unforging them. They'd put a slave in water. I've heard that and before. Pierce. So I don't know if this is true or if it's just like people make it up propaganda but, right exactly yeah, i don't know but the whole the whole thing is that when skin is introduced to water it releases nitrogen okay and then when you quench the blade and it, the nitrogen coats the blade and gives it like a much stronger surface that's hardcore yeah which is sweet and yep. then europeans uh mimicked the same thing by just putting like animal skins in water and <laughs> stabbing like the blade through there huh. so there's your little history tidbit okay uh the great crusade now uh, it really only happens over the course of 200 years, yeah. the crusade itself. There's a little bit of lead up to it and a little bit after it that we're going to get into, but just, just so you know, this is purely timeline. Yeah, we're, we we're doing not, a very skeletal version of this. Um, yeah, we're, we're not going into like every single detail no. because we want to do it later. Yeah, we want to save it for later where we can actually go in depth. And once everyone knows kind of the... The bare bones. All the all the themes that we run throughout 40k then we can go back and really open up some of these big cans like right. the horse heresy yeah exactly or the yeah yeah which we're still going to touch on yeah like that'll be our next episode but will it for anyone who yes is that episode seven eight nine i don't ah. 30, 32 <laughs> the, the one podcast i listen to they're like all right, so this is episode anywhere between two and a thousand. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you just forget. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. And uh, yeah, so um, the Great Crusade it happens um, M thirty. Yeah, the very at, tail and I think end. it starts at like seven ninety eight. Yeah, and then it goes to M thirty one. But it only goes till year five, so that's it's two hundred and seven years that this thing lasts. Yes. And and to think about what they've accomplished in just those two hundred and seven yeah. years. So keep that number two hundred and seven years in mind. Yeah, because that it's quite phenomenal for humans. For humans. For humans with no webways. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So where we left off last time, the emperor just finished conquering Terra with his, and then he massacred all his thunder warriors. <laughs> He's got a smile on, like you're just waiting for me to object to that, like. <laughs> He did, but he didn't, but he did. <laughs> we don't know. Anyway. You know what I was thinking about? Uh, so when we had Christian on yeah. the very first episode I know. Warp, he talks about the Thunder Warriors. Yeah, yeah, he briefly mentioned it. And then I'm like, oh, man, I wish he was in the army so he could come and just. Yeah. But we'll get him on eventually because he has this awesome Thunder Warrior idea going on he, in 40K. Okay, don't tell Christian I said this, but those models are sweet. They're pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
What, which models? The Thunder Wars? Yeah. So it's some, is Thunder Wars? Yeah. yeah. But oh. they're taken from Oh, yeah. Ages, we don't want to puff them up. No, of yeah. course not. <laughs> but they're taken from Age of Sigmar, right? Yeah. Yeah, so they look like... And I really dislike the way Age of Sigmar is going because <clears throat> it, it looks way too cool for how I picture, like... Um, like, like grungy fantasy yeah. setting. Yeah. Yeah, it looks way too cool. Yeah. But that's whatever, besides the point. Yeah. But the models are sweet. He paints actually quite well yeah, because he's, he's a perfectionist. <laughs> well, well, actually, I don't want so, them to hear this episode. <laughs> his painting style is the best. Like, it looks sweet if you're looking at it from the top, but then you spin it upside down and you, then you, like, see under the backpack and it's like, that's still, like, gray plastic. Like, you didn't even bother going in there. He's like, no, that you can't see that. Like, <laughs> Except we're staring at it right now. It, as long as you don't pick up the model, it ah, looks sweet. Yeah, but yeah. when you pick it up and, like, flip it upside down and yeah he's, anywho he's got a really weird body perf- oh what <laughs> why are you staring at his butt anyways <laughs> well that's like in like i don't know like construction or anything if you can't see it you just don't worry about it yeah the like, one the yeah. one line everyone always says is well looks good from my home yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh man but uh yeah so the emperor finished conquering terror using his thunder warriors and uh at this point it's like M29 still, and he starts on his Primark project. Yes. So Primarchs... Oh, what? The Emperor's Enlightenment. Yeah, so I guess during his conquering of Terra, he uh, sets up what's called the Pax Imperialis, or the Imperial Truth. And what this is, is basically there is no more religion. Um, you... What's that one movie where he's like, I believe in science? Or, oh, Nacho. 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 <laughs> you judge me because I only believe in science. That's basically what the imperial truth is. It's the belief in science and things that you can actually measure and study. Yeah. And, like their uh, doctrine. Doctrinal it, statement. It really something. is. Yeah. yeah. And he sets this up because he sees throughout his the past of humanity, people always get these religious causes and they end up going crazy. And they what, end crusades? up crusades? What's wrong with that? <laughs> He literally has his own. (laughs) A crusade never hurt nobody. (laughs) So yeah, uh, that's basically what he sets up. And he goes around terror and he destroys every church. Every religious symbol he destroys. And he says, we believe in science. I just, I can't picture you saying that now. Right? (laughs) We believe in science. Yeah, that's what I want him to say. Yeah, so good. Um, So he does that. And uh, he starts his Primark project. Uh, yeah, Primark project starts in M twenty nine. That's yeah. when he starts it. Yeah. Um, now, the Primarchs are twenty individuals that he creates from his own DNA. Some would say that uh, they are his sons, and some would say they are not his sons. Well, those people would be uh, wrong, but that's fine. <laughs> that's well, that's another another point to argue <laughs> but uh, so he creates these 20 beings now when he was on Moloch which we talked about in the previous episode that was yeah. when he made his pact with the ruinous powers yeah because he didn't create these on his own like his he own needed help yeah his own knowledge wasn't enough yeah to create these and that's one I don't so I don't know if it says if the reason he did the pact was so he could create these or once he got that knowledge he realized he could make them no well okay so it it is it could go either way right right but uh but they were a direct consequence of him going to moloch the other thing that they said he used was forbidden knowledge yes uh like because during the men of iron they outlawed a bunch of stuff so also but he's the emperor he can do whatever he wants yeah so maybe like yeah he used some of that like artificial intelligence and put in the primarchs like he he did whatever he had to do to make these these beings yeah. that are fully aware to make choices by themselves act as themselves. oh yeah no they are like they're fully sentient sentient yeah yeah but they're they're not robots either no no like there's no like as far as i'm aware there's no there's, electrical no no there isn't they're they're flesh and blood yeah they were like they are son his sons like he used his dna and he grew, he grew them yeah in, in, in tubes. In, yeah, in gene cultures. Uh, yeah, in tubes. Yeah. He grew them. But the Primarchs are, like, without a doubt, if he could, I would assume that he would have created armies of Primarchs. Uh, why, why wouldn't you? Just the, t- so the, time, the time, time right. requires. That's what I'm saying, if he could have. Oh, if he could have. Yeah, okay. Right. So the Primarchs, <laughs> they are um, they're stronger, faster, 
more intelligent. Yeah, way smarter. Driven. Uh, yeah. Ambitious. Loyal. <laughs> I stumbled on that <laughs> word. Spoiler alert, Eric. <laughs> um, but they're also um, described, when I was reading, it's just, they're described as uh, charismatic. Yeah. Because they were the face of his yeah. arms in the galaxy. Yeah, there, there's so many stories where, like, a person meets a Primarch, and they meet this, you know, 10-foot-tall, like, perfect being. Yeah. And they, they're just speech speechless. They don't know what to say when they meet him. Yeah. Because uh, th- uh, th- there's also just this power and authority that just emanates from him. Yeah. But they would, are... Would a Primarch almost be kind of like the priestly order of the Emperor? If, if you were to consider, like, the Imperium his church... Yeah, yeah. Like... They are the missionaries. Yeah, okay. They're the okay. ones going out and spreading the imperial oh, truth. Yeah, that, well, and, it's and like they're going. Yeah, they're shedding the light. In the in like the Bible, there's like the idea of the apostles, which is like a Roman word. Like a, an apostle was like someone who was supposed to spread Roman culture throughout uh, the conquered Roman area. So they yeah. would send out these apostles, and that's like where the well, uh, okay throughout ro- conquered Roman area. Yes. Okay, so yeah, yeah. these ones are going where it's not conquered oh, yet. Okay, gotcha. Conquering it. The Ecclesiarch would be after. Okay. Yeah, but the yeah, eventually the Ecclesiarch do Didn't, not exist at in, this point. Yeah. Yeah. But there there is like a church. Yeah. yeah. Way later. <clears throat> As of now, we only believe in science. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, sorry. I all good. You. But yeah, th- th- it's kind of like yeah, they are like they're the ones going out and uh taking these planets. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for for the empire. Yeah, for the imperium. This is this is way further now. So uh, he, he he's using arcane knowledge, forbidden things, but he's warp. Cre- yeah warped powers. Warp powers. Yeah, he's like imbuing them with like psychic energy. Yeah. Um, and he's doing this all on Luna. Yeah. Which because he builds a uh, lab on Luna, and then he's you know he's doing it himself. You know, I'm assuming he has help. Yeah, he says he has a bunch of scientists with him. Yeah, yeah. As well. Because he can't do it all alone. Uh, I think but... they even name a couple of them. I can't remember the one guy's name, but mm. he does name one guy. Okay. And the one guy does pop up a couple times in uh, the Horus Heresy series. Ah, well, that's pretty important. Yeah. So he's building these Primarchs who are going to, like, they're going to be his number one tool in. Because r- remember, this is right after the Age of Strife. When there's all these warp storms are cutting off humanity. And humanity's once great empire has now been shattered. Yeah. So he's like, these are going to be my number one tools in the reunification process of bringing all these planets back into the fold. Yeah. Um, Another part of the imperial truth is uh, humanity's right to rule is another big part of it. Like humanity's divine right divine wait hold that's, on that's i know i know so when you talk about the imperial truth it's funny because like there is yeah you only believe in science but there are words like that where it's like it is our destiny to rule this like galaxy and stuff yeah. so it kind of is hmm. funky in its wording but yeah, yeah. isn't every religion if you think about it right well that d- 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 depends if you believe this is a religion which it totally is but that's fine <laughs> it's more of a cult <laughs> if, <laughs> i don't want to get into it <laughs> Um, so yeah, we have the Primark Project. He's building these beings. Now, what eventually happens is they are lost. Yeah. Um, some people think that uh, when the uh, when the Emperor went and made a deal with the Chaos Gods for this forbidden knowledge... On Moloch. On Moloch. Part of the deal was that um, the Chaos Gods would be allowed to spread the Primarchs throughout the galaxy, hoping that the Emperor would not be able to find them. Mm-hmm. The, uh, they also think that maybe uh, they said, like, the Chaos Gods were like, yeah, if we spread them across the galaxy, then we have a chance to corrupt them. Yes. We can use these tools. So. Yeah. So it's, it, there was there's definitely, like, a trade-off, depending on the conversation and, like, the theory that you hear that happened in the Chaos Realm. Depends on if you're talking to a loyalist or a heretic. If you're talking to a loyalist, <laughs> you know, this was just a tragic event that yeah, never should have happened. Terrible, terrible yeah, it tragedy. It was not planned for. No one could have seen it coming. But if you talk to a filthy heretic... <laughs> it was all... Pl- well, the em- some of them even think that the Emperor planned the losing of the Primarchs. Yeah. Um, uh, not maybe could, planned, but he knew it was coming and he used it for his own. Exactly. Yeah. So. Because obviously you, well, anyways, we'll get into that later. Yeah. So, okay, <laughs> so the, the Primarchs are lost. How they are lost, though, is actually really cool. 
It's kind of interesting. Yeah. So uh, what happens in, in short form, um, they, they're in their room. Like, there's, like, a, a room with all the Primarchs in it. They're in their tubes, and they're growing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, vroom, chaos storm happens, and they disappear. Yeah. Uh, sucked into the warp. Just sucked into the warp. <laughs> Uh, and then they just reappear scattered throughout the galaxy on a bunch of different planets. Yeah. Long version, word bearers. Yeah, the word bearers in, it's in 40k that this happens, the word bearers? Uh, no. It's in 30k? I think it's during the Horus Heresy. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, um, yeah, I guess it is. Okay, so during the Horus Heresy, uh, a bunch of word bearers actually get sent to the, the lab on Luna. And they end up destroying the Geller fields, which are protecting. If you remember, Geller fields are used to uh, yeah. We put them protect, on top of ships. Yeah, to protect from the warp. So they go and they destroy these Geller fields, and then then the Chaos Gods can like suck the the tubes into the warp and spread them across the galaxy. Yeah, and it kind of creates like kind of one of those you know anytime you deal with time travel, it's yeah, always it's a, awkward and whatever. I, Don't think too hard on it or too long. Uh, gosh, there's a word. Casual loop. No, that's not the time one. Time paradox. Paradox, that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. It totally creates a time paradox. Yeah, yeah, because... Anywho, so that that could happen, and uh, the, the Primarchs are spread across the galaxy. So the Emperor still wants to go on his crusade to conquer the galaxy, but now he no longer has his Primarchs. Yeah, his, like, number one asset. Yeah, but he does have... Their samples of their DNA, and from them he creates the Astartes, the Space Marines, oh, don't, don't and he so creates <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that should have been our intro. Oh, dang it! <laughs> Missed opportunities. <laughs> uh, he creates one legion for each Primarch, and uh, he creates like a Space Marine is basically like an eight foot tall, genetically modified super soldier. He has like two hearts. He can spit acid. He yep. has a fused rib cage. His bone structure yeah, is like it's... unbreakable. Apparently, their bone or their skin is bulletproof. Like, just think of the most <laughs> overpowered but, thing. But what makes them different than a Primarch? So a Primarch is um, like, like they're, they're the prim- same d- genetic sample, right? Yeah, technically, Primarch- I would say no. They're not the same genetic sample because a Primarch is built using the Emperor's DNA, mm-hmm. and then when he creates the Primarchs, he's warping everything. Yeah. Everything is changing. Okay. And then a space marine is built from a Primarch's DNA. Yeah. So there but is the, the, a disconnect the, the between. The biggest difference is a Primarch is completely made. Where a space marine, you take a human yeah. at a young age, and then you implant them with the gene seed. Oh, I see. I see. And so then those they're, changes they're happen. They're originally human, body, yeah. and then they become. That's a good point. Yeah, the Primarchs were never human. No, they, they're test tube created. Yeah. They're never human. Where okay. space marines were actually humans that transcend. Okay. Yeah, so he creates these... Transcend. Would you say they leave their humanity behind? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What, so why are you smiling? They're no longer human? <laughs> no, they're still human. No, I think I'm above you, but I'm no, still human. Not. <laughs> Anyways. So, yeah, so he creates these Adeptus. Uh, yeah, and he creates them to now go out and conquer the galaxy. Yeah. So first he starts... Uh, like, this is still at M20. Like, he's still in his... 29. Pre- uh, yeah, sorry, M29. He's still in his preparation phase. So first he goes, he starts his Primarchs. They all get lost. He goes to... Gosh darn it. Oh, shoot, I'm not startle. again. <laughs> <laughs> he goes to Mars, and he makes a deal with the Mechanicum. Um, in the Mechanicum on Mars, they have, like, a religious belief called the Omnisaya, which is basically, like, uh, a quote-unquote divine being that has, like, intimate knowledge of technologies... <laughs> Why are you giving me that look? The Void Dragon. Her- heresies. Uh, that could be an episode all itself. But the Void Dragon? Yeah. Heck yeah, I could. Um, so the Emperor goes, and like one of his first moves on Mars is to heal an Imperial Knight. There's an Imperial Knight with like a broken leg. Oh my gosh. No, whatever. Fuck it. Keep going. What? <laughs> and he literally. If there's an Imperial Knight in the story, he'll bring it up. <laughs> This is an important. This is literally how the emperor like takes the mechanicum. You he walks every, up to you. The- <laughs> you think whatever you need to think <laughs> to raise up the imperial knight. It's fine. Oh boy. Okay. So. He walks up to the imperial knight, which is like a fifty foot fall, fifty foot tall robot, and he lays his hand on the knee joint that was wounded in battle, 
Well, you say it. wounded. It's a it's a machine that was destroyed in yeah. battle. It's it doesn't feel wounds. It has a machine spirit. Oh okay? my gosh! <laughs> not really, but um, and he heals it. He fixes it, and it's not like he takes out like a rocket uh, ratchet set. Like he's not tightening a bolt. Sure. And, like he just lays his hand on it and he heals it. So the the mechanicum <laughs> see. I just think it's so funny that you use the word heal. What else should I say? He fixes it. I, but fixes implies, like, tools. Not necessarily. Like, he psychically fixes it. Sure, whatever. <laughs> Sorry. He heals the wounded. Miraculously. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so, the Mechanicum's like, this is the Omnisire that, like, we've been... Waiting ta- for. Waiting for. Yeah. So, they end up building the Emperor, like, giant warships... Uh, they are weapons. Yeah, they're the ones supplying his power armor. War. Yeah. So now that he has the Mechanicum in his pocket, he's able to gear out all his Astartes, his Space Marines. How, it, how many Space Marines does he make? I don't think they give a number to begin with. Really? Yeah. To begin with? Yeah. Okay. But like, there's a, an order that the Legions are made in. Like, the first Legion he makes is the Dark Angels. And, uh,. Like, who knows, maybe he just made the Dark Angels and he sent them out. Then 50 years later, he made, you know, the next sure. one. Like, they, it doesn't, they don't It doesn't really... take long to make a Space Marine. No. So, who knows how long this really happens. But eventually, he gets all, all these different, like, little keys in order. He ends up taking the rest of the, the Sol system. And then he has his Space Marines. He has the Sol system. He has, like, all the infrastructure that he needs to go and take the galaxy. And the final step, and I thought this was hilarious, before he leaves the Sol system and goes on his Great Crusade, is uh, there's a planet called uh, S-E-D-N-A. How would you say that? Sen- Senya? S-E-D-N-A? Yeah, I think that's... Sedna. Sedna, Sedna, yeah. And it's the planet X, the 10th planet in the Sol system. <laughs> and he destroys it. He just fucking vaporizes He's it. He's like, I don't got time for this one, so let's just go. <laughs> well, so, like, if any of you, like, crazy uh, conspiracy theorists out there... Yeah, I've heard, of, it's, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah planet it's X. Planet yeah. X that it's rotates like... around, the, uh, around the Sol system every, like, 40,000 years in such a huge arc Oh yeah. Okay. that eventually it gets close to Earth and it destroys Earth. Yeah, yeah. So he's like, I can't have this, like, it's probably getting pretty close to Terra now. I can't have this destroying Terra. So he destroys it. He just vaporizes it. And it's just like... He's like, like, now I'm good. Yeah, yeah. It's such a funny... So ca- they, 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 they include that in the canon. So yeah, that's a canon funny. story. Oh, yeah. funny. Yeah. Do, they, do they ever include, like, any other uh, sort of, like, modern-day conspiracy theories as... Um, I don't know about... You know? The, I don't know about conspiracy theories. I'm sure there is. The other one that does come to mind is... Uh, there is... I believe it's a Mechanicum Priest on Mars. Yeah. And he has, like, a reliquary... And uh, I think, like, he's showing the reliquary to the emperor. And, like, they're like, oh, yeah, this is blah, blah, blah. And this is blah, blah, blah. And then he points to one thing, and they describe it as the Mars Range Rover. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, this one guy has the Mars Range Rover in his possession. <laughs> so there's a couple, like, funny little things if little, you're really paying Easter eggs. Yeah, if you're really paying attention. Yeah. Um, that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> So that's his last step before he leaves the Sol system. And now he starts his Great Crusade. Yeah. So he starts going out, conquering planets, and eventually he starts to find Primarchs. Okay. Yeah, so in he, he's, he's traveling the galaxy, bringing the pocket empires from the Age of Strife back into the fold. Yeah. Forcing their return to the empire. Yeah, some are forced into it. Some have, like, ancient beliefs that, like, they that view divine, him as the Messiah. Yeah, that divine being will come and reclaim all of us. And, yeah. you know... Sometimes it's easy, sometimes, sometimes it's they're not. forced. And other times they run into a Xenos race and they just wipe them out. Other times they run into a Xenos race and a human race, like working side by side in harmony, they wipe them out. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 there's no room for... There, there's no room for Xenos. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. I guess that's the other big thing about the Imperial Truth is that, like, they believe in the divinity of humanity to take the galaxy. Which means there can be no Xenos. Like, right. Like, there's, there can't be anything to contest us. Exactly. Okay. So, um, the Great Crusade, like, there's a bunch of cool battles that happen all over. Yeah. Really cool things that happen, but uh, we're maybe, not going to... Yeah, maybe one day we'll get into some more of it, but... 
as for right now, um, what we're going to do is I'm just going to list all the different Primarchs because there are 20 of them. Yeah. I'm going to list the Primarch and the order they were found by the Emperor. Yeah. And then Mark's going to list the Legion that corresponds to them because each Primarch, his DNA was transferred into an Adeptus Astartes Legion. Yeah. Okay. So the first one that's found is Horus. Yeah. Horus Lupicol. And uh, he becomes the Emperor's favorite because it's the first one. He's with him the longest, yeah. and uh, he's with the Emperor the longest, too. Where once you get down the list, like, once you get to, like, Alpharius, yeah. um, Alpharius might not have even met the Emperor for all I know. Yeah, yeah. well, no. because at that point, like, Ulanor would have happened. Yeah. Right? No, 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 no. Ulanor happened after all, all the Primarchs were found. Oh. But, anywho... Like, some of these might have only met the Emperor, like, once or twice. And you spend, like, ten minutes. Yeah, where right. Horus was, a, was with him from the very beginning, basically, yeah. and stayed with him. That was him. his favorite son. Yeah. <laughs> son. <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> ah! Me and I have gone to this huge <laughs> argument about how uh, the Primarchs are the Emperor's tools, or they're his sons, and basically... Definitely sons. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> and children. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, so uh, the first one found is Horus, and his legion is... The Luna Wolves. And then they become... The Sons of Harris, Horus. Yeah. And then they become no, no, Heresy. No, 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 no. You shut the your... The Sons of Heresy. You shut your mouth. <laughs> sons of Heresy. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> sons the, of Horus. Sons of Heresy. Heresy. Then uh, they become the Black Legion. The next one is Lehman Russ. And he's in charge of the Space Wolves. Okay. The third one... His name has been deleted from the Imperial Records. And he's in charge of the Astartes Legion that has been deleted, deleted from, right. from Imperial Records. Annexed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the fourth one is Ferris Manus. And he's in charge of the Iron Hands. Uh, a brief thing on him was uh, during the beginning of the Great Crusade, uh, there was three branches of, like, three three main pushes or whatever, like, three main fleets that went out. Horus was in charge of one. Ferris Manus was in charge of one, and who's the the other one? I'll, I'll come back with the other one. But anyways, but yeah, Ferris he, Manus. yeah. So he he was also in charge of one, which I found neat because we'll find out later. Things happen, but anyway. Hey, thanks for that little tidbit, Mark. He, he was a, he was a good guy. Like he yeah. he he was in charge of something. Yeah, yeah, pretty yeah, big, pretty big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, number five is Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children. I like those guys. Uh, a, a lot of these names too um like so when the emperor created the legions um he gave them a name and yeah. then when the primarch found them they changed the name right they, to suit the the primarch and you know their attitude and culture because they yeah. grew up on different planets but yeah um then number six is vulcan of the salamanders seven is rogel dorn imperial fists number eight is roboot gilliman <laughs> of the robo girly man boys Wow. Oh, the, right. ul ultra right. the, <laughs> the Ultramarines? The, the raw butt girly man. <laughs> oh Some would say that the Ultramarines are like the perfect representation of the Astartes. And they would be right to say so. Right. It's like they are everything an Astartes should be with no deviances. Yeah. Which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, ultimately was a good thing, <laughs> unless you're a heretic. Yeah. All right, uh, number nine is Magnus the Red. Of the Thousand Sons. Number ten is Sanguinius. Of the Blood Angels. Number eleven, Lionel Johnson. Of the Dark Angels. Uh, funny thing about Lionel Johnson. <laughs> that sounds like a really, like, American name. Well, <laughs> no, that's exactly what I was about to say. Uh, Lionel, Lion, his name is Lion and then L. Johnson. Oh, okay. But, Not like Lionel. No, but okay. it's actually one of, like, the writers... His name is Lionel. Oh. <laughs> and they took his name and gave it to Lionel Johnson, which is kind of funny. I think it's funny. <laughs> uh, number 12 is per Perturabo. 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 Of the uh, Iron Warriors. Not to be confused with the Iron Hands. Yeah, there's some of that. <laughs> uh, number 13 is Mortarion. It's not as bad as, like, corn, and it's like, you got your blood letters, you got your blood crush. You know? <laughs> blood thirsters. Yeah, <laughs> not as bad as that, but no. close. Uh, Mortarion. Of the Plague Mar No, sorry. Uh, ah! <laughs> of the Death Guard. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, 14 is Lorgar. Of the Word Bearers. 15 is Jagatai Khan. 
Uh, the White Scars. Yeah. Mongols. Mongols. Yes. Uh, 16 is Conrad Kru- Kurz. Sorry. Also known as the Night Haunter. Yeah. And he's from the Night Lords. Uh, 17 is Angron. Of the World Eaters. The, I love and, that name. Yeah, and so uh, this is one of the ones that I do know the original Legion name, okay. which was uh, the Warhounds. Oh. So then Angron found him, and he made this awesome speech, like, you are no longer blah, blah, blah. You are now Eaters of Worlds, nice. or something like that. I, I mean, it know. makes sense, really. Yeah. I, I forget how it's worded, but it was I pretty. Just, pretty I cool. like that image, the imagery of, like, the space brains descending and just consuming a planet. <laughs> Um, all right, we're almost on 18. The 18th found was Korax. Of the Raven Guard. The 19th has been deleted from Imperial Records. Do I make the same joke? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, of the deleted from the Imperial Records. Mm, yeah. I like to think that... Um, I, a quick side note. I like to think that there's, like, a psychic barrier, and any time someone who, like, knew their name says it, it just sounds like... <laughs> like to anyone else that hears it it's just a muffle yeah like okay, yeah like, sure like when because they all know the name right yeah. of their brother that was like deleted from the records yeah. so when like sanguinius is talking to rogel dorn and he's like man that's <laughs> such a great guy <laughs> i wonder what ever happened to him <laughs> yeah. that, that's like uh um oh geez the name is lost on me it's this new show that's that's like the uh, I can't even remember that. <laughs> oh my I'm losing all my words. <laughs> They're all <laughs> lost on me. But there's a show where it's like uh, all this all these uh, technological things happen. Every show is every is episode, it Black Mirror? Black Mirror, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Black ah. Mirror. There's the one episode where they uh, they like implant their brain so like you, they can control what people see and hear. Oh. Yeah. And then they'll block out if there's like a criminal, they'll block that person out. So every time you see them, they're blurred. Oh. And you, you can't hear them talk. And if you say their name, it's <laughs> really <laughs> yeah yeah. That's creepy. <laughs> it's like an ostracizing from society. Yeah yeah yeah. Hmm. Anyways. Yeah. And then the twentieth and the very last. A uh, Primark found is Alpharius Omegon. Which, he's in charge of the Alpha Legion. But, uh... Alright, go for it. Alpharius and Ogamon? Uh, uh, o- sorry. Alpharius Omegon or Omega? Alpharius and Omegon? And it's actually two. They're twins. So there's 21 Primarchs. <laughs> yeah, but there's only 20. And so. whether the Emperor... <laughs> Whether the Emperor uh, knew this when he made them, I don't think he did. Yeah. Or, like, when you think about it, they're in a tube. It's yeah. not too difficult for, like, two cells to split apart and form. Yeah. And uh, it's actually a secret. Like, no one knows that there's two Primarchs except for the people in his legion. Yeah. And uh, so when they're sent through the warp, this is a good time to touch on it. I think so. Um, there's... Like a lot of these Primarchs have genetic defects like crazy. Yes. So like, like he cre- the Emperor created them in perfection. Yeah. Like and then there's some where there's Sanguinius who literally has angel wings. Yeah. And like, and, like he uses them to fly. Yeah. And like one of the big things about like the Imperial Truth too is like don't trust mutants at all. But like a lot of his Primarchs become mutants. Like uh <laughs> Layman Russ, he he has like he becomes, like, wolf dna in him, and he has, like, crazy teeth. <laughs> I just hate how they're like, my wolf tooth talisman and my wolf gun, and I ride thunder wolves with my wolf <laughs> pelt, and it's just, like, my frost wolf cannon, and ugh. So, the, the main I thing I like is... them when they're better at just space Vikings, you know? <laughs> when, yeah. And, yeah, well, they did change a lot in 7th for them. So, um, yes, but the, you're right. When when the Geller fields are removed by the word bearers and the Primarchs are actually lost and they're sent through the warp, yeah. they are altered by the warp. Not all of them, yeah. but some to more. So Sanguinius has a really strong, like he's a very strong psyker. Yeah, one like, of them. Yeah. yeah, he is affected a lot. Like he literally has wings. Yeah. Right? So there are some changes that are made. Doesn't Vulcan change? Um, yeah, like I think he becomes... Black. Yeah, no, like they, they, they're like, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 it's sweet. Like, so he he becomes like like black as coal, and like super, I, yeah, yeah, like 
<laughs> super dark. That's oh my gosh. You're the worst. And his eyes become like red. Like, yeah. Yeah, and then there's another one who's like an albino. Korax is like an yeah. albino, basically. Which is weird. Well, actually, kind of not really. He just has really white skin. Yeah, yeah. But I his hair is actually black. Yeah, but he, which is funny because he sticks to the shadows a lot. So he's like, he's well, super like white. I don't know hides. if you know too much about him, but uh, like, so all this, like, all the Primarchs have some degree of psychic ability. Yes. And and one of Korax's features is like. He can basically yeah turn do, himself invisible yeah do what Jordan was talking about and like basically blur himself out so yeah, people yeah. don't know he's there. Well, there's so I was reading a book and I haven't read a lot of these books, but I read a couple segments, and there is one part where uh, he's fighting, and it's it's batshit insane. But the coolest part is he shoves his hand through. Uh, I think it's a predator. So he like he had. He like punches through this predator, yeah. and he's carrying grenades, like three <laughs> grenades in his hand, yeah. and he punches through the predator, holding the grenades, and then they detonate in his hand, in- and inside the predator, yeah. yeah, and his hand's fine. Oh, of course it's fine. He's a Primark, <laughs> but it's just like it, like it fucking just punches through like a <laughs> yeah. steel plated vehicle meant to withstand <laughs> massive blasts, and it explodes it from the inside. Yeah, oh. uh, Primarks, they're. they're they're crazy. They're sweet. Yeah. Okay, so... Do we want to quickly touch, too, uh, just a little bit about each Primarch's homeworld? Just so then when we I keep... would just do a couple. Let's, like, do Lehman Russ. Ugh. And do Horus. Ugh. And then do... Well, start with Lehman Russ. Ugh. Start with Lehman, Lehman Russ. <laughs> and, oh, I, what's the other... Well, who's the one that fights the dragon? Um, or the worm? Uh, Vulcan? Yeah, do Vulcan. Because the Emperor has to fight the worm too, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah no, yeah. well, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll mention a couple. So, uh, Fenris, Layman Russ goes to Fenris, which is a death world, and it's basically like a world of ice, and it's like land is always shifting and moving. He A death world is a world where everything is trying to kill you. Yeah. Like, if you survive on a death world, like, you're beast yeah so he becomes basically like a viking savage like sailing on ships raiding other villages and just becoming a viking savage yeah and he's ra- raised by wolves actually too um <laughs> which is crazy yeah and yeah eventually uh like one of these like tribes finds him and uh i think they kill his mother or something like that i think i remember reading yeah. that too yeah no, yeah he kills his mother but then he has two brother wolves mm. that he keeps for a while and then like eventually like layman russ like gets quote unquote tamed by the humans like he realized oh i'm not a wolf i'm a human <laughs> well he's not a human but like that <laughs> well yeah <laughs> but yeah so like i don't know i don't find him interesting at it's, all it's it's just the fact that his planet is very unique yeah. And his story is unique. I don't care if you don't like it. <laughs> but yeah. it is unique. You know, he's raised by the wolves, and he gets, like, wolf attributes. Yeah. Right? Like Sounds like the jungle book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But basically, the, the, the main thing to take away is uh, Primarchs, when they land on a planet, they beca- become, like, heavily influenced by the planet that they land on. And heavily and, invested. And invested. Well, not all the time. Most of the time. Not all Ooh. the time. Um... Porter Rabo, I believe, does not really care for his home world. Really? Yeah. Well, eventually it blows up his home world. Oh, but that'll happen. Nine times out Nine of ten. Nine times out of ten, <laughs> that'll happen. <laughs> but, uh, uh they, so. they, they, and they take on, like, the attributes of the planet. So, um, Rabot Gilliman basically lands in a place that's, like, like, Rome, just at its peak, where it's, like, a highly efficient machine. So he becomes this, like, perfect statesman and he knows how to put pieces into play and like knows how to run every detail of his empire um where another one like jake taddy can jake hattie can (laughs) jake taddy can uh he lands and basically this is the leader of the white scars the mongols yeah and he basically lands in like a typical mongol setting where he's riding horses and stuff and he gets like speed tactics and he becomes like super like mongolian basically Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then and that translates to how he runs his legion and, exactly. and the tactics that they use. Exactly, they that's like what I'm trying bikes. to. Yeah, they yeah. like to use b- bikes. And uh, another one is um, what's another good example? You're not going to do Vulcan. 
So Vulcan went. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> he lands on a volcanic planet. I think it's sweet. No, it, it's cool. And basically, there, there's just small tribes on the planet, and they are like heavily self reliant and self dependent. Yeah. And they're all blacksmiths. Yeah, and they're all black. No, they're not all black. But <laughs> no, they're not. I think most of them are. Well, that's what they I probably have, have darker. Yeah. Hue oh, to all their all, skin. Yeah, all like, salamanders are black. But that's because they're built from his gene yeah. seed. But uh, when the emperor lands and meets him. Uh, yeah, this is what's cool. Yeah, like he does not believe that the emperor is his father right away, and he makes like they do a challenge like to prove that the emperor is like better than him because yeah, because yeah, he's the best. Yeah, and so and they he knows it. they they both forge a weapon and they do a couple other contests, but the cool one is they go and on Nocturne, the planet, they have these giant fire breathing dragons or drakes or worms or yeah. whatever, and the contest is whoever goes and finds the biggest one and returns and kills it and kills it yeah with his hands yeah 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 so um uh vulcan finds a huge one and he kills it but then over the course of uh like trying to get it back or whatever he ends up dropping off a cliff and he grabs on the last second and he grabs onto his drake and he ends up dangling there like <laughs> holding onto the cliff holding onto drake and and this like he's a not, stubborn Primark, not like, a not a small Drake, no like, like massive, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's just dangling there, and eventually the Emperor walks by with an even bigger Drake, <laughs> like slung on his shoulder, and he ends up like helping up Falcon and taking the prize, and yeah, yeah they become friends. It's a bonding moment between yeah, father yeah. and son, yeah. really. If you want to know more, like we're just briefly skimming. Yeah, on but, it, I, but I just like that story. Like, yeah, the like, Emperor had to like prove himself to yeah. them, and, and, I, and I a like lot that of them he do was that. like I like that he was willing to do it. Yeah. Like, Lehman and Russ, uh, they get into, like, a drinking competition, I believe. Um, yeah, a couple <laughs> of them have... get into a drinking competition with the Emperor? <laughs> <laughs> Does he even get drunk? Probably not. No. But, uh, yeah, so they have a bunch of competitions. Yeah. And some, when they see the Emperor, they just recognize him as the fa- as Like, their, Sanguinius their did it, didn't he? Uh, yeah, Sanguinius did it. Logar did it. Yeah. Um, un- yeah, so... Well, of course, Logar. Yeah. Yeah. So they all kind of have their own backstory. And like I said, we'll eventually go into Primarchs. But we want to get the whole of 40K kind of out Set. there. Yeah, um, Yeah. so that's kind of... he. They're, they're on the Great Crusade, and as they reach further and further into the galaxy, they find more and more Primarchs. And each Primarch's given their own Legion, and then they put their own unique spin onto the Legion as they conquer more and more of the galaxy. Yeah, they, they, they kind of just get their own identity. Yeah. Really. Yeah. So, and it's it's kind of cool to see the differences between all of them. Like, um, like Robot is very to the book. Yeah. Like very he follows, organized. Yeah, very organized. He follows his tactics exactly as they should be. He does like the proper one. Yeah. Right. Not necessarily like the best one, but it is the right decision. Yeah. No risk or little risk, but not as big of a reward as potentially some other ones. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to see it. Um. Yeah. Now let's um. During okay, so he's conquering the galaxy, finding, getting his sons back. Yeah, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of battles. Yeah, and he's he's bringing all these the humanity back into the Imperium. Uh, during this, one of the things, one of the only battles we're going to talk about, yeah, is the Ulanor Crusade, which is a crusade against orcs. Yeah, so Ulanor uh, was a planet. Yep. And on that, Still is. Well, it is. Now it goes by different names. Yeah, yeah. Anywho. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we've touched on it before we did. in the we Orc did. episode. Yeah. 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 Um, so Ulanor was this planet where uh, there was an Orc uprising. Yeah. And at this point, like, the Imperium doesn't really understand the threat that Orcs play. I'd say no. No. Especially because of the, what happens after the Ulanor Crusade. Yeah. Right, so there's this Ulanor Crusade. Uh, it happens in M31, and it is going to be, like, one of the very last battles um, that the Emperor himself... Well, it is. It is the very last yeah. battle that the Emperor himself leads personally. Yeah. After this, he not abandons, but abandons definitely abandons <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the Great Crusade, yeah. and he goes back to Terra to work on his yeah. secret project. Yes. So in, in the Ulanor, it's this massive, massive battle with orcs where they're just swarming the planet. Uh, it's led by Warmaster Urg, 
mm-hmm. I believe is his name, the orc. Yeah. And in in the end of it, it's kind of sweet. Uh, a tactic that Horus really liked to use, because Horus was there on the planet, is he goes straight for the command center. Yeah, cuts off the head. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so he drop pod. I, fucking, I love drop pods. They're, they're wild, yeah. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so he just doof, 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 drop pods like right onto the command center, uh, busts open like the room where War Master Urg is, and I think it's like 40 of the biggest orcs they'd ever encountered are in that room. Yeah. And then Hor- Horace just, he's got his lightning claws, and he's just ripping them apart with his claws. Of course, he's this lightning. No, he claws. does. Does he? It's described in there as oh, okay. using lightning claws. Okay, yeah. I guess he would have different he, yeah, weapons. Yeah, he can use whatever the hell he wants. Ah, sorry. Screw you. <laughs> sorry, Horace. <laughs> you better apologize. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, 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 and he just rips them he all just apart. He just rips them all apart. Yeah. But uh, probably a cinematic moment yeah. of it is that he, he takes Erg's like, ripped and shredded body, and he just throws it from like the top the battlements of the like the command stronghold. center yeah yeah and then all like the green skins um which i feel like is a super like derogatory term for green orcs. skins like like if the humans like those fucking green skins <laughs> uh, hey don't swear my mom listens sorry, to this i'm so sorry kathy um so our greatest fan <laughs> <laughs> not anymore <laughs> Uh, so he throws him his body from the battlements. All the green skins lose like their, like you know when. Well, when you think about it, when the, because he was leading the wog, it would have been a wog, and yep. he's leading the wog, and all of a sudden you find someone who's stronger than your wog leader. Yeah. Uh oh, you're screwed. Yeah. Because he was the biggest and strongest. Yeah. So they basically go into shambles. Yeah. Because you get lose the wog. Wipe. Get wiped out. Yeah. But that's like it was a massive battle. Yeah. Uh, Eight million Imperial Guardsmen. Hundred thousand space. Hundred. Yeah. It's, Which it was, is wild. Yeah. That's mad. Like hundred thousand of the best soldiers in the galaxy. Yeah. Anyways, so they wipe. They wipe out all these orcs. Um. I, this is the battle where the orc almost kills the emperor. I thought it was. Um, I'd have to reread it. I thought it was. Yeah, it's not Urg. Like I always, yeah, Urg, I always yeah, thought it was some. I always knew it was a random orc. Hmm. It wasn't like. I don't think they ever give him a name. Yeah, yeah. Which Urg has a name and he's killed. Yeah. So maybe it was just another big orc. Yeah, but, but I'm pretty sure it was the Ulanor Crusade. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. So at the where end, an orc attacks the emperor and oh, nearly kills oh, him. Oh, we talked about that. We did, but just in case somebody... Gotcha. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Uh, orc attacks the emperor, horse saves the emperor's life, quote unquote. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Screw it. Let's have this conversation again, Mark. Okay. <laughs> um, no. Um, yeah. yeah, so... But the biggest consequence of this is... Okay, we're gonna, we'll talk about the, the mechanicism, and mechanicism and what they do to the planet. So, <laughs> after the planet is won, after the crusade is done... Yeah. Um, <laughs> in typical Mechanicum fashion. Right, in typical hum- humanity. Yeah, they say F the environment. Yeah, <laughs> and they level a continent. <laughs> <laughs> they level a continent. How do you... Uh, think about this, though, Eric. Yeah. How do you level a circle? A c- what do you mean? Because planets are a circle. So they would have to, like really really level it uh it's all relative like there's uh, always going to be the curve but the curve okay. is small no i like to think that they got rid of a curve and like <laughs> they legitimately leveled leveled. it. leveled yeah so when you look at the planet you're like huh there's like a flat <laughs> part of like they literally. carved out they very well could have that's what i like to think because that's hardcore and that's what the mechanicum would do of course them. like no half measures no half measures yeah. <laughs> so they level a continent for a parade yeah <laughs> like it's called the ulanor triumph um, and they make a path, which they say it's a uh, mere smooth granite. It is five kilometers wide <laughs> and 500 kilometers long. <laughs> it, it's, it's massive. It's huge. <laughs> All for a parade. All for a parade. <laughs> and the, this path is lined with the skulls of the orcs killed during the Ulanor Crusade. Which is wild. That's like, so it's sweet. so metal. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so metal. <laughs> Duh. Line the path with the skulls. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of cool. And at the end of this path, like at the end of this uh, thing, there's a huge temple where there's like statues of like eight of the Primarchs, the Emperor himself, and then um, a couple of like the Terra nobility. Uh, but And then it's guarded by the Custodes, uh, Sisters of Silence. Oh, yeah. also the uh, this temple or 
citadel or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it's on a mountain. Yeah, of course. It's just, yeah, it's like just... Probably like, a made mountain. I, no, I, I think... Made. Or even if it isn't, I think that they just found a mountain and they're just like, screw it. And they just like, vroom, they cut off the top of it and they just put the <laughs> citadel on top. Yeah. Uh, so, and then it's guarded by custodes, sisters of silence, and two gold-plated warlord-class titans. <laughs> And, like, the warlord's, like, 100 feet tall. Have you ever heard of Overkill? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. But... The emperor must have a tiny... (laughs) Because he seems to always do such grand measures, so he must have a tiny little wiener. He's just building his legacy. How dare you? Overcompensating. Exactly. Oh, man. Uh, But the... The two main consequences of this is that Horus is named War Master. Yeah. So he, Horus is now going to be in charge of every kind of military action to do with the Great Crusade. Yeah. And the Emperor leaves. Yeah, and so this kind of creates two issues. The first issue is with the Emperor leaving. A lot of, the, like, over time, a lot of his sons are like, why did the Emperor leave us? Yeah, they, to, feel, like, they feel betrayed. They've, yeah, and neglected, and, like, he just left us to do this. Like, why? Like, why is he not here on the front lines with us doing this? And the other thing was Horus becomes the war master, which... Raises some jealousy. Raises some jealousy. and right, also, they're like, yeah. They are perfect warriors, but they're not without faults because they, they still and, have like and wills. The, and to go back to what I was saying, like when they land on a planet, they take that planet's identity and they up it to the next level. Yeah. And the same thing happens to their faults. Like, sure. It, they up a tiny little fault to like the next level. Like everything is so extreme. Now, with correct them. me if I'm wrong. Angron, where yeah. does he land? Um, I forget the the name of the planet. Okay, but well, it's basically like a gladiatorial world, which makes sense yeah. now, right? Because so Angron is like, he's probably like the most bloodthirsty. Yeah. Of the Primarchs. Yeah. And it it only gets amplified right in his life like as a gladiator it would make complete sense that he does great as a gladiator oh yeah oh he yeah nothing can beat him right exactly yeah but uh yeah so even their character flaws become amplified right um so this jealousy or whatever that some of them get does become amplified yeah and that so sorry yeah so well that's just kind of leads right into the horse heresy for those for those things when, when yeah. they eventually so, when they when they start leaking out yeah right yeah some are, are definitely a more logical like leap like oh yeah of course this guy becomes a heretic because of this reason right which we'll get into later next episode it's i actually i i kind of like the like the seduction to chaos like they do it a, a lot better than some of like the lore that i read hmm. but like it's very slow and it was very um like, like when I look at the decisions that Horace makes, yeah, like I track with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You right, can... like I see and I understand why he does one decision to the next. Yeah, some of it you're like, well, shouldn't you have seen the red flag there? And shouldn't you have seen like this one? But when you understand that they have these faults and flaws, because part of me is like they're perfect, but right? They're not. But they're not. No, yeah. they still have their own flaws. So yeah. it's like the what I compare Horace's fault to is uh, Arthas. Okay, yeah, yeah. In in World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. So he's the Lich King. Um, but I never understood Arthas's decisions. Yeah, yeah. Like, li- I'm like, how the fuck did you go from being a paladin of the light... <laughs> to, to killing to, your father. <laughs> to killing your father and murdering an entire town. <laughs> like, you're... Yeah. It, yeah. It's a little more extreme of a jump, for sure. Right. Where, Whereas which, I like how Games Workshop yeah. did horses. And it's fall. crazy, too, because Games Workshop is 30 years old. They've been working on this storyline. But, like, in the beginning, it's like... They didn't have all this worked out. Mm-hmm. Like they, they've been adding to it and adding to it. Yeah, they've just done a really good job. But uh, uh oh, lost my train of thought. Well, um, the next thing I have here is that when the emperor leaves, he's going to start his secret project. Yeah, which we'll talk about during the horse heresy aspect. Shh, I mean, it's a secret. The, some type of aspect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he leaves. Um, the Primarchs definitely feel abandoned and betrayed, yeah. um, but they are, they are meant to continue their Great Crusade. And they do. And they do, yeah, mm-hmm. for a little bit. For a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, and then one of the last things we're going to talk about... Another big defining moment of the Great Crusade. Of the Great Crusade, yeah, is uh, the destruction of Monarchia. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about Logar, the Primarch of the world, word 
bearers. Wow. Life's tough, hey? Life can be tough for yeah. a little guy like me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Logar lands on a planet. Sorry, once again, I forget the name of I'll the planet. I'll find it. I'll find it. Okay, sure. But the planet is basically like a giant religious cult. And when a, when a Primarch lands on the planet, we've mentioned this now four times, he becomes, Keep going, Mark. He, he becomes like what the planet is. Like he becomes an embodiment of the planet. So this planet is highly religious. So Logar becomes highly religious and he takes it to the next level where like everything he does is like this religious purpose. So this planet, one of its main religions is like the, that there's going to be a great being from Terra who's going to come and, you know, unite them and take the stars type thing. Very much like what happens. So when the emperor... um. <laughs> so Eric just showed me the name of the planet, expecting me to say it, but uh, <laughs> it's either Colchis or Colchis. Colchis. <laughs> but uh, and it was a feudal planet. Yeah. So when the emperor comes, they like instantly it instantly recognize him as like this divine being, and like a lot of the people on this planet start to worship the emperor, which goes directly against the imperial truth. The Pax Imperialis. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever. The emperor is busy, so he just goes on with his life and whatever he kind of i think he probably tells uh logar hey don't you do that don't you do that or or maybe he wasn't aware of it or whatever he he doesn't bigger fish to fry exactly so logar when he goes to a planet he basically tries to spread the uh not the imperial truth but um the ligo divinicus i think it's called the hmm it's basically the the worship of the emperor okay as a god which the emperor does not like right because of the pax imperialis that he said yeah so he goes to these planets and he does like planet conquering so slowly because he like oh i'm gonna stay here now and build 18 chapels and set up my priesthood and blah 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 blah, blah all in the name of the emperor and he basically is the slowest legion in conquering the galaxy because he assimilates. Mm-hmm. Like, when he reaches a planet, he doesn't just conquer it and then say goodbye and leave it to the, like, Imperial forces to do it. He does it himself. Exactly. He's also... Well, I think a big part of that is when he was, like... When he grew up on Colchis, mm-hmm. like, he was a priest. Yeah, exactly. And, like, like, he was an orator. And, like, one of the things he did was he, when he was receiving visions that the Emperor was going to come back, yeah. he started preaching that to yeah. the people. And it created a schism war. Like, it created, like, a civil war, bet- like, over the entire planet. Okay. So, like, A, he's he he loves to spread the word. He's good at it. Do you think that's why he called his legion the word bearers? Yeah. Like, do you think that's clever? <laughs> no. That's why I got this <laughs> stupid look on my face. <laughs> no. Th- Does Games Workshop think it's clever? Now, that's <laughs> they the think qu- it's clever. <laughs> that's they were the like, question. That is so cute. <laughs> The word bearers. Actually, bearers of the word. Actually, I love the word bearers because they have like their scrolls and they cover themselves with like these words, uh, the holy words. And yeah. Yeah. That's, it's actually sweet how they look. Yeah. It is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, but like I definitely think that's part of it is like that his root is doing it himself. Right. Yeah. And you said that like yeah. where they are, it amplifies, everything is amplified in them 20 fold. Yeah. Right. I said tenfold. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know numbers. And yeah, so he's taken a long time to conquer the galaxy. At one point, he uh, gets this one planet and he makes this one city called Monarchia. And he calls it like the perfect city. Why he calls it that, who knows? But he likes to call it the perfect city. He built it. Maybe it has the perfect... They escape. had really good suburban planning. <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. It was a pre-planned city, you know. No traffic. Yeah. Like... Yeah, that congestion was really low. Yeah, exactly. And uh, he spends way too much time on this perfect city. So the emperor, is he's had enough at this point. He's like, you're worshipping me as a god. That's the exact opposite of what I want you to be doing. You're, you're not advancing the Great Crusade is also what you should be doing, but you're not. So he sends Malkador's Sigilite, which is like the emperor's right-hand man. And he sends Reboot Gilliman, another Primarch. To go reprimand Logar. And uh, so they get to the city and they basically tell Logar, like, we're destroying this city. Everyone on this city has to evacuate. 
So they give them time to evacuate. So it's not like they just destroy the whole human population. They evacuate the city. And when the city's evacuated, they, the Robot Gilliman and the Ultramarines destroy the city. They just wipe it out and they say, focus on your job. Stop doing what you're doing. Otherwise, this will happen. And uh, they eventually, Logar is made to kneel in front of Robot Gilliman and Malkador the Sigilite in in the rubble of his like greatest achievement, this perfect well, city. And his entire legion. And his entire legion. He's basically utterly humiliated. Yeah. And like Logar is just like, I was just trying to worship my dad. Like this is yeah, yeah. this is what has to be done. And like, like he's and, a god. Like yeah. he deserves the worship. Yeah, exactly. And at this point he's like, fuck it. Well I'm done. Fuck him. Kind of. So I'm, there, there is the some, reading... there is some deeper things, yeah. but so he says, is deeply hurt oh, and absolutely. deeply like he is now pretty much set on this path of fuck it. Yeah. So he like mourns, uh, what happened. It says for like for a month. Yeah. And he does and it, nobody it, sees him. Yeah. Nobody sees him. He only speaks to like two guys that he yeah. grew up with. Yeah. Corferion and, the, and uh, I think Erebus. Erebus. Yeah. 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 It's crazy how much, you know, uh, anyways. <laughs> so then after that, he goes back out with the Legion uh, and there, a month passed, and it says the emperor was about to reprimand him again for for wasting time. Yeah, like, another whole damn month of, yeah. of doing nothing. But uh, then it says that world worlds started to fall yeah, to the world, world after world in rapid order. Yeah, like when a space marine legion gets their mindset on something. Yeah, you can't stop it. No. It's gonna get especially it like done. the founding re- like legions. Yeah, right? where they have hundreds of thousands of marines and behind so, them. so many resources. Yeah, and, and they're well, all and that's together. the other thing. There is like other resources. Like there's the Imperial Guard that fall. Well, I think they don't call it Imperial Guard. They call it uh, the Imperial Army. Mm. I think, but anywho. Yeah, and like, but it was crazy. Anyways. Yeah, so they go on this massive like conquering of hundreds of wor- not hundreds but worlds they go yeah, on yeah. and uh everyone thinks all is well <laughs> oh good until one night yeah oh good we destroyed a city all is well he couldn't possibly be harboring any grudges no of course not why would he <laughs> and the seeds of heresy take root yeah which is which is a pretty cool story yeah so to me um that marks the end of the great crusade i know like lorically the end of the Great Crusade happens at the Battle of Istvan with the three. Horus Heresy. Is it not five? Istvan uh, five. Which one's three and which one's five? At one of those ones, I know which one in my head it is. It's the. <laughs> it's well, the that one, doesn't translate very well to it, it's this. Not, it's not the drop site massacre. It's the battle. Oh, it's okay. not the drop site. So it must be three then, because the drop site yeah. is on five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's when like Games Workshop officially ends the Great Crusade gotcha. and starts the Horus Heresy. But to me, like. This is kind of the end of the Great Crusade. St- things at this point start to kind of fall apart. People are starting to get, like, these grudges against others. People... Yeah, if if you were to point to a moment in time and say that flipped. this is where the turning point in the Great Crusade was, yeah. really, I would start on Ulanor. Yeah. Like, as soon as the Emperor abandons yeah. the Great Crusade and yeah. he drops off, it's like... Well, what now? Yeah. You know? And that, like, there are these defining moments. And this is a huge one for Logar. Yeah. Right? But not necessarily for Jaghatai Khan Mm -hmm. or Korax, right? Like, it's different. Yeah. So. But But this is basically, yeah, what we're going to... This is a big one. This is the big one, because as we talk about in the next episode, you'll find out why. Dun, dun, dun. And, uh, yeah, any other thoughts on the Great Crusade? Um, no, I don't think so. I, like, it's difficult to talk about anything else without really stepping into Horus Heresy territory. Yeah, yeah. So, like, the Great Crusade would have been, like, it's sweet. It Lots is. Lots of really cool battles. Yeah. Between, like, humanity and finding different worlds and everything. So Yeah, and you can, like, focus even in on, like, one of these Primarchs, and you can go so deep with them, and they all have their own intricate backstory. and Yeah, which at some point, like, we'd like to get into. Yeah. So, it's just... So much content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um so to me if the Emperor is the main character, Primarchs are like the next like Yeah. supporting characters. Like they're yeah. they're really what play the biggest impact on the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Especially once he leaves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I think that pretty much takes care of the entire 
Great Crusade portion that we want to talk about. Yeah. So uh, next, let's get into our lorical discussion. Okay. To so to start off uh, the Tales from the Warp, let's uh, we're gonna dig right into the missing legions. The unknown legions. Yes. The second and the eleventh. Yeah. Not necessarily unknown, but deleted. So that's all the information yeah. we have yeah. on that. Deleted from the Pure Records. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week, mm-hmm. I guess. I, I always say next week, but really it's every Bye. two weeks. Weekly, yeah. We'll see you uh, in 14 days. Ah, doesn't uh, have the same ring. It too. doesn't, no. Uh, so the two deleted legions would be, yeah, the 2nd and 11th. Yeah. So Games Workshop originally made these. We'll, we'll start here. Sure. G- Games Workshop originally made these two legions. Uh, back in the day, so uh, when people wanted to make their own Space Marine chapter, they could use these two unknown legions as kind of like a uh, yeah a blank a, slate. A, a blank slate, exactly. But uh, over the years, Games Workshop has kind of dropped hints what might have happened to them, but they've never given a finalization. Yeah. And it's they, still it's still open for you. It yeah, but it, it's a, a much less. Yeah, so. I I personally think they should just. Tell what happened to him and get no, it over with. I kind of like the mystery. I like the mystery, but the whole reason Games Workshop did it was so people can create your own legion or chapter from them. Yeah. But think about this. Anytime anyone ever says, yeah, I'm the second legion, they get laughed off. They get laughed at like, oh, yeah, of course you are. You know, like, yeah, you can't it's kind of turned into a trope. Yeah. Like, you can't really use it. So therefore, like, I think they should. Because yeah. no, like. You'd be the second legion, but no one accepts you. Exactly. And, like, you really do just get laughed at, yeah. like, when you do... Unless you have a really awesome story. Why? I think, I, think, I don't think you could ever claim to be, like, the second legion, but you could be the second founding of the second legion. Yeah. Because the, the legion itself, that's gone. And... Yeah. But for, but people often say that, no, it's not, and I am that. Yeah, it just... Yeah, I think yeah. Games Work should either further expand on it and give us some actual clarification... Or not, it is cool to talk about, but... Yeah. For you personally... For me personally, I wish you would they never just... Cre- you would never create a second legion. Exactly. You know who would create a second legion? Which I will mention. Christian would create a yes, second legion. Yes, and he has, and he will, <laughs> and he's done it. <laughs> so... Of course he has. But he, he actually did in one of the few ways that I do approve. Was that the one with the uh, blanked we'll, out Space Marines? Yeah, we'll get it. Yeah, too. I like those ones too. So, we're going to talk about... Again, uh, just, he, he can't hear this episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about like what Games Workshop has said about them and kind of what our thoughts on them and then maybe even a couple ideas how we could implement them in a in a way that is not just so the second dumb, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll start off with like... Rogel- well, it's a short story. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Rogel Doran talks about their separate tragedies at one point and he mentions like their separate and... Uh, tragic fates. Okay, the the tragic fate being the fact that the emperor purged them. Well, he doesn't say anything. Like we don't know if the emperor purged it, them. It, or... I actually did find a reference to oh, where okay. the emperor personally okay purges these yeah. Uh, legions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, the uh... something something good to note is that it definitely happens before the Horus Heresy. Yeah, and so it might not have anything to do with, with chaos exactly which is huge it is. because there are a lot of transgressions done by these primarchs that that is forgiven exactly well not even forgiven but like not expunged like right they're not removed from the the, yeah. anal, the annals of history yeah. right like so one of the things that is mentioned is korax when he meets the emperor he asks the emperor about the two separate legions and what happens to him Korax was the 19th Primarch discovered. So by the time he was discovered, uh, these two Primarchs were already expunged. So right there, it's proof that it didn't, or it happened before the Horus Heresy. Uh, the other thing to mention is Lehman Russ apparently uh, was sent to deal with one of these legions or both of these legions. And he talks about how. Uh, when he's sent to Prospero to deal with the Thousand Sons, he's like, people are like, oh, this is unprecedented for Marines to fight Marines. And Russ is like, with a canny smile, he's like, is it? Yeah, yeah. Like, I've done it. Like, yeah, yeah. He kind of hints towards it. Yeah, the, um, 
Another cool thing is that they are often referred to as uh, the forgotten and the purged. Yeah. Now, this could be purely like they are forgotten and purged or... One's forgotten. Exactly. One is purged. Yeah, so yeah. cool. Because, yeah, these two two premarks might be very intertwined with each other or have nothing to do with each other. Yeah. Um, another thing to think about when thinking about them is at one point, uh, Horus sees Sanguinius, leader of the Blood Angels, kill one of his own legionnaires when he falls to the Black Rage. Uh, the Black Rage is basically like they turn into like a crazy berserker and they get all bloodlust and like they just kind of turn wild really and like they can no longer control themselves and horace is like what was that why'd you do that and yeah like why did you kill your son yeah. and sanguinius basically says you know what happens to legions that have like a genetic defect right so maybe one of these legions had a crazy genetic defect i do have um an argument to make for that one okay and uh in one of the books right around the time when the emperor um, purges these legions, yeah. the ultramarine numbers swell dramatically. Ah, so maybe... So the, yeah. and, and there are a number of references, um, especially in the Primaris, creation of the Primaris Marines, where the gene seed actually, I would say, is not at fault. Yeah. And it more had to do with the creation, like the choices of the Primarch. So uh, well, if, maybe, yeah, the Primarch the, was so crazy. Yeah. Like, he, he got... Yeah, because if the gene seed was really at fault, there's no way the ultramarines. And this is just the theory. Right? There's no confirmation yeah. that they went into the ultramarines, but yeah. there's no way the ultramarines would accept it yeah. because they were considered like the purest gene seed, right? Yeah, and like another point to this After too is like nights. the thousand suns, <laughs> the thousand suns. Uh, they they mutated heavily too mm -hmm. before uh, they found uh, Magnus found them or whatever. Before they found Magnus, right? So like the whole mutation, like. Yeah, maybe they, they just had the craziest mutation. Yeah, it would have to be insane. Exactly. Like, it's yeah. not just, yeah. yeah. And another thing uh, to kind of debunk the genetic one is uh, when the scientists are experimenting, or they're trying to create the Primaris Marines. Yeah. Um, they actually create Primaris, gene, Primaris Marines of these two lost legions. So they have their genetic and including, stock. Yeah, they do have their genetic stock still. Yeah. And he also creates uh, Chaos Legion ones too, I believe. Oh. oh, he has their, their genetic templates. There's no way Reboot would allow that. No, no, so I, I don't think... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but I, I misspoke. They don't create it, but they do have they it. They have them. And yeah. they have the second and the 11. Yeah, so they have all their genetic stock. They yeah. just aren't creating them. So, yeah. But when he, he actually is experimenting on creating Primaris Marines with this, and Reboot says, um, no, we can't use... Like, I refuse to allow these to be used. Yeah. And then um, the scientist who's doing it is like, but he's like, but my lord, like... The fault lies not in the gene seed and lies with the Primarchs. Hmm. He says, even your legion has fallen. Yeah. Like, even your your genetic, uh, your founding chapter. What is it? Gene seed? Your, your successors. Oh. He says, even your genetic successors have fallen to chaos. So, I yeah. really, like, Sanguinius does make that line. Um, if there was to be a genetic fault, and that's yeah. the reason with, it needed to be with the Primarch itself. Yeah. And not with and their gene And it had to seed. be crazy. Yeah, like, like unfathomable. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's really just chaos spawn. Yeah, essentially. And there's, there's an interesting thing there. So, uh, when Horace is receiving visions, yeah. um, they show him the lab. Mm-hmm back on Luna of yeah. the, all the primaries, the Primarchs. Yeah. And he stops before the 11th pod and he goes, he talks about all the wasted potential here. Yeah. And then um, he comes back later and he actually smashes it. Yeah. And he puts a crack in it. Right. So yeah. when they're transported through the warp, interesting, yeah. like if there's a crack in like your pod, which could potentially protect you, like yeah. imagine the craziness that could come with that. Yeah. So maybe they did find him and he was just a gibbering chaos mess spawn. Like that would be insane. Right. That'd be pretty wild actually. Yeah. So yeah. that's e even though like I, I very much doubt it has anything to do with chaos. Maybe not chaos, like the actual the chaos gods, gods the but rudest. more just like warp energies. Yeah. yeah. And to me, like, yeah. Anyways, 
if I was to ascribe one of them to be forgotten, that would be the forgotten one. <laughs> yeah, The yeah. purge one would be the one. Well, no, no, you'd purge the mutant. Purge the... That's, that's not a mutant at that point. <laughs> it's just a mess. Huh. Okay. Yeah, he would be forgotten because they don't want to remember that one. Whereas yeah. the purged, like, they had to purge his I mistakes. guess that would be like, Layman Russ, we sent him to deal with right. it. Right. Would, would the... You said the 11th had the crack? Yeah. He could still be alive on a planet, and they just they just left him there. Like, it could. We can't deal with this guy. Like, yeah. We're not going to kill him, but like... He's our brother. Yeah. Um, Anyways, keep going, Marcus. Um, yeah, so that's really all I can remember. <laughs> There's... We covered all our notes. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh. You, you wrote a lot of things down, though. Those are words. Half yeah, of them don't no. have meaning. Yeah, yeah. It's just gibberish. Yeah. But, I wanted to be smart. <laughs> so we don't really know what happened to him. Um, you can kind of come up with your own ideas. There's there's a lot of like little tidbits in chatting between the Primarchs themselves yeah. in their books yeah, about like. So there's a quote. It's like uh, me and my twin. No, my eighteen brothers. Because they also uh, the Primarchs made an oath that they wouldn't talk about these. Yeah. These legions yeah. at all. So and there are they are they're people of honor. Yeah, they are. As much as they aren't, they are. Yeah. <laughs> right. So but um they I would say they didn't fall to chaos and I think it's more a decision they made. I I would probably hazard a guess that one of them just refused to acknowledge the Emperor. You know what? That's possible. Yeah, the emperor's like, I'm going to use you to do this. And he's like, no, he's like, I'm yeah. a simple cabbage farmer. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> Olaf. Olaf. The Olaf ca- the cabbage <laughs> farmer. It's like Olaf doesn't steal. <laughs> so I, I would say probably that's um, like that's the easiest thing because they would definitely view that as betrayal. Right. So you have like your brothers and all your brothers are being found and yeah. your, your your father is bringing you back yeah. to like your your destiny and your purpose. And it's like, no. Yeah. And you're just like, screw you. And then they're like, forgotten. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like, like if you don't want to join us, like we will make sure no one remembers you. Yeah. Right. You have no right to our glory and like our achievements and our conquering. Like, yeah, you, you are f- no longer among us. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and like they... I could see them seeing that as, like, a pinnacle betrayal, right? Like, if a battle brother walks out on you and, like, doesn't join, like, you would see that as, like, a betrayal on the deepest level, Yeah. right? Like, when the the Marines actually turn and they flip to chaos, like, just the decision that they made was devastating. Yeah. Right? Regardless of, like, all the people they killed, like, you just feel that on, like, an emotional level. Yeah. So I kind of, like, think that that's probably one of the reasons... Yeah, that could very well, well be. It's it's a very simple one. Yeah. I find that simple is easiest to believe. Yeah. Um, another one is that so a lot of the Primarchs had psychic powers. So what if one of them was a blank or a pariah and they just did not like the Emperor met him and the Emperor didn't even like him. Oh, of course not. Like all the other Primarchs oh, met him. And oh, my like, gosh. Right? And, like, they just hated okay. him. They just... Would, that's... Okay. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. Um, the blank pariah, it is a gene. Yeah. So that would indicate a defect. Now, the question would be, is that in the gene seed, or is it in the Primarch itself? Could be both. Could, could be one could be or both. the other. If... But. Okay. If it was in the Primarch itself, I don't think they would use the gene seed. Unless they were creating a legion of blanks. Dun, 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 Christian. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sweet. He, yeah, he came up with this awesome, like, uh, this is one awesome way to use one of these legions is, yeah, one of them is a blank. And, like, they literally, like, no one liked them. And they expunged them from, like, their records. Yeah. Not only because they didn't like them, but also to keep them a secret. And they're, like, so he still got in contact with his legion. And all his legion are blank legionnaires, mm-hmm. and uh, like yeah, but they like they almost every space marine is going to have some connection to the warp, right? Like at the very least, you have librarians in your chapter. But instead, they have just like super blanks, like, right? So that is like they, like they can't work with other space marines exactly. And like whenever they do get in contact with other ones, they just mind wipe them, or yeah. they just you know like they they're kept even more secret than the gray knights. 
and like they're still around in 40k oh, doing on. their thing how like, could you be more secret than the great knights by literally like killing everything that ever meets you ever that's what the great knights do well sometimes not sometimes. all the time not all the time but yeah so that's like okay. a good way to implement it like it's it's a decent one it's um, a decent one it's also like there is the the potential for the emperor just wanted a secret legion oh that's possible too right like it's yeah. a it's like he already he does have the gray knights yeah but those were founded after yeah it was right uh yeah i guess the emperor's secret legion i don't know yeah it's not a very good no, theory it's... but it is there is potential for it like well, yeah. yeah that would be like the like someone who's making their own second founding and they're like we're the secret legion yeah like it's kind of like yeah, why for no reason other than the fact that the emperor wanted yeah a where if, at least if you're blank there's kind of a logical yes, reason why because no be. one would be around yeah. yeah what about this warp storm entire legion lost <laughs> gone <laughs> yeah. like we don't know what happened to his tragedy like he's just <laughs> no i can't i can't hold with that one i just it sounds when i'm reading all this stuff it sounds like the primarchs know what actions they took yeah or at the very least they know that the emperor's retribution was severe yeah like the maybe they don't know the actions that like brought upon the um the purging but they know that like it was terrible what happened yeah so i i really i don't really hold with the whole like ah we can bring the second legion back because i really think it's gone yeah yeah the second too. and 11th like it's yeah. just purged like yeah. they have the gene seed like and it could be even pure gene seed yeah and they just refuse to use it which is devastating yeah like based on like that's that's so many marines <laughs> built out of a gene seed. A, yeah. It would be a good strain, too. Yeah. Right? Because they haven't had all these years to decay. Yeah, yeah exactly. It would still be up to... Yeah, it would be good gene seed. So. Um, so what about this, then? Yeah. Okay, so both Primarchs, the, the 2nd and the 11th, land on the same planet, okay? Opposites the ends of the planet, and then... They get like they don't know that they're both the sons of the emperor. They yeah. just think they're both like awesome people, and they they do like a planet wide war and they fight each other. And one of them actually ends up killing the other one. So that could be like an so, unforgivable sin. Yeah, and so one is forgotten because like no one really knew him. Right. And okay. then the other one is purged for killing his brother. And, like, it's not the brother's fault, like, because he didn't know the greater Imperium and, like, the no. way it all played into into play. Like, he just thought he was at war with another uh, leader of the planet, right? The only problem with that one is I'm pretty sure the Emperor met all the Primarchs. Like, I think all of them were discovered. So then for him to die right. before he was discovered kind of right. doesn't work. But once again, like... You can make anything work. Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, uh, yeah, the that's an interesting story. Um, it would it would work more if. Um, oh, I totally while you were while you were talking about, it, I totally had a a reason why I think. <sighs> I've, I've lost it. And it's gone. Yeah. Um, I got one more if you don't got anything. No, I don't. Keep going. Okay, so the final one, and this one's just kind of goofy and just uh, kind of my own retarded spin on things. Okay. Um, Sigmar from Warhammer Fantasy. He's a Primarch. Okay, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the way he's described, I'm not the biggest like uh, fantasy guy, so if I do kind of goof up some of this stuff like i've never really read a whole bunch of the lore or i've never played the game or nothing but so i'm pretty sure the way they describe sigmar is he comes to the planet <coughs> on a meteor a lot of the other primarchs went to the planet in a pod and crashed right which would look like a meteor which would look like a meteor to a bunch of uh uh medieval type technology <coughs> he, he was bigger stronger faster tougher than all the other humans right and he basically took this role of leadership, just like every other Primarch. He built his empire, just like every other Primarch. Um, there's all the Chaos Gods in 40k. So basically, he basically just lands on some like backwater world that 
has a bunch of random aliens on it and like some some like the orcs there are actually feral orcs right that ties it into 40k and also like the elves aren't actually eldar they're just like an alien race maybe they're a human Sub, mutated yeah. yeah you know ab human yeah so maybe he's a primarch maybe he does his thing and he dies or whatever it's <laughs> it's just a way that to tie them together but it it's nothing really serious <laughs> it's just something funny yeah. i thought about well yeah the like i don't really know anything about age of sigmar or like it's like is he dead sigmar? yeah uh well no so yeah in uh in Warhammer Fantasy Battles, yeah. he ascends, which would be like him getting taken by the Emperor and leaving the planet. Okay. I guess. Yeah. That and would, then he becomes like a god. You you could you could definitely see that. Yeah, it kind of works, but kind of doesn't. Yeah. Whatever. It's just something goofy. Yeah. But so, I don't know. Do you got anything else to talk about them? I don't I don't know. Like the... I, I prefer the idea that they are traitors. I kind mm. of so not not because of like um I just I like to think that not all of them were perfect. Yeah. So um when so I think of Scarbrand. Yeah. So Scarbrand is the demon that rose up against Corn. Yeah. and put a chink in his armor. I like to think because they are they are listed as traitors. They are? Yeah, well the in Sigismund yeah. Um, who is uh, an imperial fist? Yeah. Um, he looks in in the book in the short story of Crimson Fist. He sees these uh, shrouded statues of what he calls the traitor primarchs. Yeah. And says that they are traitors and be should be torn down. Yeah. Right. But definitely traitor treacherous before the heresy. Yeah. So, so maybe even like the emperor came to their planet this and is he I'm, fought back. Exactly. But, so that's what yeah. I'm thinking. Or maybe like he even was like. Yes, like I accept my role, like in this, and then all he's doing is like I'm gonna overthrow the emperor, hmm. right? And then he tries to rise up and fight the emperor, and then the emperor is like his retribution is swift, yeah, and it's complete, right? He's like if you're not a, if you're not with me, you're against me, yeah, and it's almost like this is an example to the other primarchs because there is that note of fear yeah. in the other primarchs. You see it with. Um, Sanguinius yeah. when he's talking about like oh no I don't want to do that and yeah. there's a conversation that um, Mortarion has uh, where um, one of the other Primarchs is like is it uh, after Ulanor they're like isn't it great like all uh, all or so many Primarchs gathered on one place it, uh, such a time has not happened since and then Mortarion cuts him off and says like I remember it well but the Emperor decreed us not talk about huh. like, will you break your oath Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Huh. So it, there is, like, that element of fear. Yeah, like, yeah, Like, yeah. that they don't even want to speak of what happened. Yeah. So it could be an interesting, like, the emperor kind of, like, because he can forgive anything and he can forget it. Yeah. But he's like, I could also make a very real example to yeah. all the other space marines out there. Yeah. And, and Primarchs. So. Yeah. I, I, I like to think at least one of them tried to rise up. It's quite possible, yeah. Against him. Yeah, and it's not like he rose up and he's like, I am chaos is chosen. Like mm-hmm. he could have just been doing it for his planet. He's like, no, like, or he's like, like I'm going to run the Imperium. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just purely selfish reasons. Yeah. Nothing to do with chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, again, for me, like the explanation of these super simple. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's a very, very simple, very human answer, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you guys listening, give us an email and uh, tell us what you think happened to these two Primarchs. We'd love to know your thoughts and your ideas. Yeah. If you have a better one than the blank one, I will be impressed. I think the blank one's my favorite. It is a good one. Like, just one of them's a blank, and he's just hated. <laughs> they just hate him. Do you think he's a blank or a pariah? A pariah. Oh, so he, he has the aura. Yeah. 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 I think it's pretty cool. Jordan? Cool. So, yeah, so if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at uh, lorehammerpodcast at gmail.com. We also have our Facebook page. Uh, it's called just simply Lorehammer. And our Twitter, uh, it's at lorehammer40k. And, uh, yeah, you can reach us, reach out to us on there. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, anyways, I think that's about it for this episode. Yep, that's your so. doer. All right, see you later. 
Thanks. Bye.